to call your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm Bishop Dara Hunt. I greet you today in the master's mighty name of Jesus, declaring unto you today, I'm in love with Jesus. He's the Lord of my life. He's my all in all. He's my everything. Besides him, there is none other. Jesus is the Lord of my life. My prayer for you on the day that you're in love with Jesus, that he is your all in all, that he is your everything, that he's the Lord of your life. That would make Jesus be our Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I'm glad to announce to you that it's still Jesus time. It is still Jesus time. It's Jesus time right now. <clears throat> I'm so glad that we might have this opportunity one more time to just agree together in faith, come together in love, and declare that there is still power in the name of Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, uh, we, uh, I want to get into the word because I want to be as brief as all of us will allow. So if you would, uh, open your Bibles. Very familiar scripture. I'm going to be reading out the King James Version. I want you to go to um, St. John, the 10th chapter, 10th verse. You know it. Uh, let's let's uh, let's go there together. St. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it <coughs> more abundantly. Let me read it one more time. Uh, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. What I want to talk to you about today, what I want us to reason together today is the abundant lifestyle, the abundant lifestyle. If Jesus said, I come that they might have this kind of life, that means that we are to live that kind of lifestyle. And that is a lifestyle, simply the way a person lives. And so Jesus said, <coughs> um, uh, in the book of Galatians, Paul writes and says, we are not go back to weak beggarly ways of living wherefore we desire again to be in bondage we can't go back to those kind of understandings uh we have to then press forward and so jesus said the thief coming out i know what he came for he cometh not but for these reasons to steal kill and destroy i am come 
for a different reason, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So if we're going to partake in the abundance of Jesus' life, then we have to operate in that lifestyle. Because what he says is the thief is trying to steal your life, kill your life, and destroy your life. I come that in me you might have life, and the life in me might be more abundant. Come on now. Uh, <coughs> So we're just trying to get this abundant lifestyle working because Jesus promised it. We know what the enemy is trying to do. We know what trouble there are around us. We know uh, what that what's going on in the atmosphere. However, Jesus said that I come that you might have life. Uh, the Bible said that he showed up for this purpose, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That means whatever the enemy is doing, it's just not going to work because Jesus is available. Uh, Psalms 84 and 11. For the, Lord God, for the Lord God, sorry, is a sun and a shield. And the Lord will give grace and glory. Listen to this, y'all. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. All it simply means is, is that when you're in operation in the lifestyle, then the abundance is what comes from just being in operation in the lifestyle. Then we find out here in Psalm 84, uh, he will give you grace and glory. Come on now. He will give you grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. You talking about abundance. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's how much he loved you for he is not, <laughs> just, he's not a son, S-O-N. He is the son, S-U-N. Everything revolves around him. All things consist because of him and without him, there is nothing. He is all in all. He's above all things and in all things and through all things. Oh, my goodness, I'm trying to tell you how good Jesus is. And when you step over into the abundance of this lifestyle, when you step over into what happens when we begin living in this abundant lifestyle, and all it just simply means is living in obedience in Jesus, and then the abundance just comes. Jesus says, I come, you might have life. He gives us life, but that in him, we might have it more abundantly. That means that we might just be in the flow. He that believes on me as a scripture I save out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We just get into the flow. You don't have to buy it for abundance. You don't have to tarry for abundance. He said the abundance is just what he came to give and that they might have it more abundantly. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Another is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Seek ye for, that's all you got to do is understand that when we get in the lifestyle, the abundance has to come. That what I'm talking about, the abundance of peace, a peace that passes all understanding, a joy unspeakable. He just gives us this abundance of his grace. And that's what I need. To, uh, that's what I need. I need the abundance of his grace. Ephesians chapter three, verse number 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What power? Jesus power. Grace power, Holy Ghost power. Now, what can he do with that power? I love the way Paul, now under him, I love this benediction, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's where the abundance of the life comes in. He's a mind blower. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's a, a, he's a, a, a river in the desert. He's a way where there should be no way. And so we can add stuff. But he's so good that he does stuff we don't even have. He goes exceeding abundantly above all. That means no matter what you're thinking, no matter what you're asking, he goes exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. All right, let me keep going. I'm going to speed right on through this thing. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 8, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, and God is able. And God is able. And God is able. Take a moment, get that down in your spirit. And God is able. Listen to how this abundance works. He's able to make all grace abound towards you in this abundant lifestyle that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may, uh, may do what? Abound to every good work. That you having a fish sufficiency in all things 
that's what he does. And so we don't have to live in the destitution or the uh, depravity of the enemy. He coming to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I come, you might have life and have it more abundantly. So what does he say? He says he's able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound toward every good work. So you can keep on living for Jesus, living this abundant lifestyle that he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, that you're in the flow, you're in the cycle. As long as you keep walking with him, he keeps on giving you strength to walk and under him was able to keep you from falling. He's able to do it. And that's what he's been doing. And I'm trying to get you to see that if you just tap in to what Jesus already promised, the devil is a liar. He has no power. He has no authority. Jesus will, will be done. He will be glorified, magnified, and exalted. All right, now just touch it. Now, what about in my in my troubled times? I love that you asked me that, John 16, 33, because we would be remiss if we didn't point out that all days don't look good, feel good, sound good. Uh, there's some troubled times. There's some hard times. There's some bad times. John 16, 33, these things I've spoken unto you that ye might, that in me ye might have peace. Oh, wait a minute. In Jesus, in this lifestyle. Uh, this is John 16, 33, in the world, in the world. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. You're going to have trouble. There's always trouble out there. But when you're in trouble time, listen what Jesus said. I'm telling you the words that they get down in your spirit. That when you're going through trouble times, you can be of good cheer. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If that don't get you excited, I don't know what will. No matter what you're going through, Jesus already overcome. He's already done it. It's already settled. It's already finished. He said, now in the world, ye shall have tribulation, but I've given you peace. I've already settled it. I've already fixed it. So that when you're in trouble, you can be of good cheer. Because Jesus has paid the price. The door is already open. It is already done. It is already finished. Listen to this, y'all, in the name of Jesus. Now, we talked about trouble times. Now, one more thing we want to talk about. What about when we're weak in times of weakness? Sometimes we're just weak. And it's not It's not even sometimes just us. It's just the things around us. You just don't feel it. I ain't got the energy. I don't have the, uh, I, I don't feel it. I don't know what's going on around me, but I just feel weak. What about in the weak times? I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Oh, this is what we do in weak times. He said the weak time don't stop my abundant lifestyle. The uh, troubled time don't stop my abundant lifestyle. I still live the same way because my God is still the same way. And he reminds me that his grace is sufficient. No matter what kind of deficiencies it looks like I'm dealing with, his grace is sufficient unto me. And his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's what he reminds us. That's what Jesus does. That's what he does, that we might keep on living this abundant lifestyle. And lastly, but certainly not least, Psalms 1, 2, and 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And listen, underline this. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Oh, I pray you're hearing me right here. Because now we're talking about uh, you got to do whatever you got to do to stay in this grace, to stay in this abundant lifestyle. He said, bless the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sin, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But he understands the value, the precious blood that Jesus shed. He understands how good it is to know Jesus for yourself. But he delights in the law day and night. Let me tell you something that when you start realizing what Jesus paid for you and how good he is in your life, you declare to the atmosphere, you declare to the enemy, you declare to everybody who's around you, I ain't going nowhere. Jesus been too good to me. He's been too good to me and he shall be like a tree. Oh my Jesus. They said once you make your mind up, once you're steadfast and unmovable, 
and abounding to the, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit. Listen to this, y'all, in his season. He's always on time. His leaf also, listen, shall not wither and whatsoever. Oh, I love that word. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. Doesn't matter what it is. Don't matter what it is. If God be for us, who can be against us? Don't matter what it is. Don't matter what they say about it, how they feel about it, who like it, don't like it. Jesus said it is already finished in the name of Jesus. You got to do whatever you got to do. Uh, um, you got to uh, decide you're going to decrease that he might increase. You got to do whatever you got to do. You got to bring your body under subjection that after you preach the gospel to others, you make sure that you still set on a rock, that you're still fully persuaded, that your mind is made up, that your heart is fixed. Why? Because in order to live this abundant lifestyle, my friend, you got to be in love with Jesus. And I'm in love with Jesus because he's in love with me. I pray that you also in love with Jesus. And if, I'm going to stop right there. But it's most certainly Jesus' time. Isn't he excellent? Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he amazing? There is nobody like unto him. He's all in all. There's nobody that can do you like Jesus can. Uh, let me give you this last call. This call of salvation. Because he's the Jesus that come down the flesh over 2,000 years ago. He suffered, bled, and died on the cross. He went down the grave, stayed there three days and three nights. On the third day, Jesus rose again with all power in heaven and in earth. If you believe that with all of your heart, repent of your sin, confess with your mouth that Jesus, he did rise again. You shall be saved. The Bible said, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of life. <coughs> Excuse me, a gift of the Holy Ghost. I encourage you, if you have not tried Jesus, try him for yourself. You don't need to be holy, sanctified, or any of that to qualify. All you got to do is give Jesus a try. And it's already done and it's already settled. Listen, if you have made Jesus your choice on the day, reach out to me at coj1.org. Drop a line that we might celebrate, lift up, magnify the name of Jesus together because he's still doing great, great things. And I thank Jesus for him and I thank Jesus for you. Those of you who are just recommitting yourself to his will, his word, his way on today, reach out to me also, coj1.org. Let's encourage each other in the word and let's keep on moving toward this abundant lifestyle in Jesus that his grace might just flow. Jose, I said, break up the fallow ground. He said, break up the fallow ground. Listen, until righteousness just fall down like rain and seek the Lord. That's what we're after. Until righteousness just falls down like rain. Oh, what a desire. I pray that's your desire on today. Um, uh, those of you who are believers, I want you to believe with me today. We're greeting together in faith. Our God is God. Awesome, amazing, magnificent, marvelous. There is nothing that he cannot do. There's someone who needs to know that he's an on-time God. That he's a merciful God. That he's a grace-giving God. There's somebody who's in a situation. They're downtrodden. They're heavy laden. They're in a depression, old person, sad place, dark place, troubled place. It doesn't matter what place they're in. Jesus can move in any place. And we're believing that right now he's moving in their direction. I want you to agree with me by faith that even right now he's finding them wherever they're at. He's lifting up their bow down heads. He's breaking up the yoke off their life. He's restoring their joy, renewing their strength. Somebody being delivered and set free this very hour in the name of Jesus. I want you to believe with me that Jesus, he's a healer. We're bringing them every sickness, suffering, pain, disease, every hard thing, every everything, everything that didn't work, everything that act like it ain't going to work, everything that don't move right, act right, look right, talk right. We're bringing it before Jesus, setting it before his throne, declaring, declaring, um, that Jesus has already paid it all. It's already done. It's already settled. And we claim our healing right now by faith in Jesus' name. We don't just believe he's our healer. We believe he is the healer. Therefore, we believe that anybody, all, everybody, every sickness, every pain, every disease, Jesus paid the price for. So we know that right now some people in hospice care, palliative care, emergency care, whatever, critical care, whatever that care is, Jesus cares for them. We believe it right now. That blood is already shed. That healing is taking place. Somebody's body's conforming to his word. Somebody's getting out of their bed of affliction. Somebody's getting out of their bed of sickness. Somebody's being healed and set free this hour in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that all of this is nothing if you don't know who Jesus is. So I want to remind you there's somebody who still needs to know who Jesus is. I want you to agree together, me, agree together with me in faith that his arms are not short and that he cannot save. He's still moving. He's still moving. He's moving in somebody's direction. Somebody who needs to know Jesus Jesus having visitation with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. They're being baptized in the blood of the Lamb today. Their sins are being washed. Their transgressions are being forgiven. Their iniquities are being blotted out. They're putting Jesus on. They're falling in love with Jesus. They're declaring Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened in my life. If you believe with me today that Jesus is healing, saving, and delivering, somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, it is giving time in the house of the Lord. Uh, we ought to give unto Jesus. Jesus has given unto us. The Bible said, let us not give grudgingly nor necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver. And you heard earlier, he's able to make all grace abound toward you. you have, that you to have him sufficiently in all things, in all things might abound toward all good work. Uh, but if you have hard to give, this would be your time. I want you to reach out to us at clj1.org. There you'll find some avenues if you're able to give electronically. Um, you'll find some avenues for you to be able to do so. 
those of you who can't do so but like to find a way that you might be able to facilitate the giving of your offering, please reach out to us also at clj1.org. Leave a message, drop a line, that we might be able to help you uh, to organize that you might be able to do what it is in your heart to do. Those of you who want to mail your offerings, you can do so at COJ. You can do so, excuse me, at the Church of Jesus, 2356 North Station Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46218. Again, that's the Church of Jesus, 2356 North Station Street in Indianapolis, Indiana, 46218. Um, we thank Jesus for you in advance. Those of you giving an IIF offer, we thank Jesus for you. Those of you who are prayerfully considering doing so, we thank Jesus for you. Listen, we know that Jesus is moving. He's soon to come back. His word cannot come back, boy. So therefore, we're standing right now, uh, not only in the need of prayer, but we're standing also in the covering of his grace, knowing that it's already sufficient. It's already done. It's already satisfied in him. Don't you believe it? I believe it. I pray you believe it with me. Um, I want you I want you uh, all of you to hear, uh, to hear this, that if Jesus is who you say he is. The Bible said, if he is who you said, what manner of spirit ought ye have? What manner of conversation ought ye have? Let me say it better. What manner of lifestyle ought ye have? What manner of lifestyle should you be living if Jesus is who he said you, he is? If he's on his way back like you said, he's on his way back. If you really believe it, how should you be living? How should you be talking? What should you be doing? Uh, you worried about the wrong thing, but I'm here to tell you Jesus got you. He's the same today, yesterday, and evermore. He will not change. He has all power, and he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I want you to know that I love you, but Jesus, he loves you best. You don't have to worry about tomorrow because Jesus, he's with you today. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Yes, he is. Have a beautiful day in Jesus.